I want to look at the book of Hebrews this morning, chapter 1, but I want you to go home and read the whole book because I'm talking about the whole book. How do you know? <laughs> Verse 1 says of chapter 3, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It opens the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews, open up with how the Father spoke in the past through the prophets, and now he's speaking through his Son, so he has spoken in the past, he's still speaking now, and he will still speak in the future. And what we need to do is, we need, here the Hebrew, if I have a question, the Hebrew writer is saying, is anybody listening? That's what he's saying, is anybody listening? So when we look at this book, whole book, if you go home and have time, read this book, let's take 13 chapters. The Epistle to the Hebrews is a book we need today. It's very relevant for today, and we can look at it, the past, what has happened, we can look at the present, and it will also look at the future. It's all in one book. So it was written at a time when the ages were colliding, and when everything in society seemed to be shaking. So if you read chapter 12, God says, once again, I will shake. Not only the earth, the heavens too. So when we look at all the signs and times that are escalating in these last days, we see a lot of things in heaven. We see a lot of things on earth. And there's so many things that are happening. According to scriptures, everyone on earth is anti-God. And everyone in heaven, whatever is happening up there is, also taking the place of God. We have power. So here is an acknowledgement that God will not entertain all these people that are coming against him. One day, because everything has been shaken now, and one day everything will collapse, and only the kingdom of God will endure. And that's what he's saying here. So everything in society seems to be shaking. The religious realm has been shaken. The world leaders have been shaken. Politics, economics. They all have been shaken. And people don't know what's going on, but they know things are bad. But because of sin that is increasing in the world today, God's not going to let it right. He is a powerful God. He's created everything, and he, His love is so awesome that He's given so much time for people to listen, and not only listen, but hear. So it was written to the Christians who were wondering what was going on and what they could do about it at that time when the book was written. But today we have the same question, what are we going to do about it? God has spoken in the past through the prophets. Now today he's speaking through his son, the most high priest. One of the major messages of Hebrews is be confident. Be confident. That is what he's saying. The message is be confident. Be confident in your walk with God. Be confident in your salvation. Try and work out your salvation with fear and trembling as you walk with God. And this is what he's saying. Be confident. 
Because God is shaking things so that you may learn to live by faith and not by sight. Today we live by sight, we will fail because of all the things that are, you know, escalating in our circumstances, in our workplaces, in our homes, everywhere, in our society. All evil things are escalating. So if we look by sight, we will fail. But if we live by faith and look by faith through the eyes of Jesus, we will conquer. He wants you to build your life on the permanence of the eternal and not on the instability of the temporal. And this is what Hebrew is saying. Build your life upon the eternal things, not on temporary things. Temporary things will be washed away, will fade away, will die away. But eternal things will last forever. That's what he's saying here, not in many words. So be confident in eternal things, Hebrew is saying. Dwell on eternal things. He's asking this question, is anybody listening? And I've said this story before, a man from Leeds, the true story, visited a doctor because his hearing had a problem and he, had, he wanted to check. So the doctor removed the man's hearing aid and the patient's hearing and immediately improved. You know, when you have now the modern hearing aids, little pipe goes in. But in the olden days, it covers the whole ear. It's a massive thing. Blocks the ear. So when the doctor removed that, he could hear. You know why? He had been wearing the device in the wrong ear for 20 years. That's why. So today we have the same situation. Sometimes we do the same out of ignorance. Wearing the hearing aid in the wrong ear. Because we can't hear. There's a difference between listening and really hearing. There is because if you read the scriptures, Jesus cried out most of the time, he who has ears, let him hear. So if our hearing aids are blocking the wrong ear, we won't be able to hear. Today, a lot of people stop and listen to the gospel. They go to churches, they go out in the streets, hear people preach, they go to meetings, they hear the gospel, but they don't hear. They listen, but they don't hear. This statement that Jesus made, actually, those who have ears, let them hear, suggests that it takes more than physical ears to hear the voice of God. It takes more. It also requires a receptive heart. A receptive heart. So it's, it's, it, this is it. You know, in Hebrews 3, you continue to read the Hebrews, it talks about, it says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. This is what it is. We hear a lot of things. We listen to a lot of things, you know, every, all kinds of things we listen. But sometimes we listen and just shove it out the other ear. But this is the word of God, which is so important for our lives eternally. Eternally, not only now, for eternal. And if we listen and if we hear, and if we obey and abide, then our eternal life is secured. So Hebrews warning today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. When you look at this book, if you read it, go home and read it, it's also a book of evaluation. It evaluates things, spiritual things. Because the word better is used 13 times in this book. Better. The superior of Jesus Christ is shown in this book. In this book, as the writer shows all of that and his salvation over the Hebrew system, the, the writer is saying the Hebrew system is in the past, it's old, it cannot save you because it's under the law. But here the superiority of Jesus above that will save you and give you salvation. And this is what the writer is saying. Christ is better. Christ is better than the angels, if you read on. Christ is better, and he, he brought in a better hope. This is what it says. He is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So whatever you look, wherever you look, you look at religiosity today, it never promises you any religion, any religion that believes in a God never died for you. So here Hebrew writer is saying he is better than any religious leader. 
or religious, whatever they want to call it. Another word that is re repeated in this book is perfect. First of all, it's better. And it's perfect. It's used 14 times in this whole book. Why? Why? In the Greek, the original Greek, it means a perfect standing before God. A perfect standing before God. So, do we have a perfect standing before God? How is our standing before God today? We need to ask this question, evaluation. The perfection could never be accomplished by the Levitical priesthood or by the law or by the sacrifices of animals in them days. So, what the Hebrew writer is saying, yes, Moses had a tabernacle. They sacrificed animals every day and every year, especially for the sins of the Israel. But now these Levitical you know, uh, accomplishments in a priesthood accomplishment cannot accomplish what Jesus has done. And this is what he's emphasizing. No blood of animal sacrifices can achieve what Jesus has. And this is what he's saying. Jesus gave himself as one offering. For sin, and by this he has perfected forever. What has he perfected forever? Them that are sanctified. We are saved by the blood of Jesus, and then we are sanctified by the Spirit of God. So you know, this is what he does for us. It doesn't end there when we be, when you get saved by the blood of Jesus. He guides us all the way to into perfection. This is what he does: sanctifying, making us clean by the washing of the Word of God, and all this. What are we doing this morning? We are washing ourselves through the Word of God because the Word of God is the cleansing power. So in the Old Testament, if you look at the tabernacle, we always know that the, the gates that we enter, then the, then the sacrifice altar, then the lava where the water is there and the priest has to wash himself, clean himself in, before he enters the holy place. So here we are actually sat down by washing ourselves through the washing of the Word of God. Because it cleanses us. And this is what we do. The writer is basically pointing out that the Old Testament system of the law, the Jewish system, religious system, cannot, or any other religious systems, cannot do what Jesus did. They are all temporary. And that's what he's saying, and that it could not bring the eternal better things that are found in Jesus Christ. No religion is eternal out there. If you study world religion, you will know. Buddha came to show the way. But he didn't live. He didn't rise again. He didn't say, I will shed my blood for you for the remission of your sin. He didn't do that. Taoism, don't do that. Hinduism, don't do that. Islam, don't do that. Muhammad came and he died. But only Jesus rose again. And if you look back in hindsight in history, there's so much of proof, more proof that he rose again than fiction. So, you know, when you look at all this, believe me, I was a critic. I was a skeptic. But you know, when God touched me, I saw the whole thing. And that's why I can share what I know. Eternal is the third word. Better, perfect, eternal is the third word that is important to the message of the Hebrews. Christ is the author of eternal salvation. He only not saved you for, for this purpose on this present earth. He saved you for eternity. Amazing. Because you know what? Let me, let me explain something to you, those that don't know. We are a threefold composition. Body, soul, and spirit. This body will die at a certain age, whatever, 80, 90, some 100, some 60, some 70. But the Bible says three score and ten. Man's life is three score and ten because of sin. Because the sin has increased before Methuselah lived 930 plus years. All these people in the Old Testament lived hundreds of years. And Abraham, 175 years. But now... The, 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 the age limit has been shortened because of sin. The Bible talks about three score and ten. Seventy years. But if you live more than that, 
is a bonus, is a blessing. But you've got to utilize that time that God has given you to give Him glory. So when our body dies, it becomes dust. Because we are formed out of dust, the Bible says. And He breathed the Spirit within us. That become a living being. But when we die, if you put a dead body on the street three days, it will deteriorate and, and it all become dust again. You know, all, all the bones will be left. But the flesh will become dust. And you know how much is worth? Two quid. So you don't need to be proud of who you are. You only worth two quid anyway. But the real you that lives inside this temporary body is the one that's going to graduate wherever. If you believe in Jesus, it's going to graduate into heaven. If you don't believe in Jesus, it's going to graduate into hell for eternity. These are eternities we're talking about. Not a, you know, it's like infinite, isn't it? Infinity. All throughout eternity. Are you going to burn in hell or are you going to praise God singing in heaven all the time? This is our choice. So here eternal is mentioned. He's the author of eternal salvation. Through his death, he obtained eternal redemption. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus for eternity. And he shares with believers the promise of eternal inheritance. We become heirs and joint heirs of the kingdom of God. We are royalty. We are priesthood. Such amazing promises. And it's not only temporary, but eternity. His throne is forever, it says. And he is a priest forever. Wow. Not just a high priest that, you know, dies at 80 or 90, but priest forever, he lives forever. And Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. Everything is forever here. Yeah. Better, perfect, eternal. And that's what Hebrew, the writer of Hebrew, is talking and telling us that Jesus is above everything. So when you combine these three important words, better, perfect, and eternal, you discover that Jesus Christ and the Christian life that he gives us are better because these blessings are eternal. It's amazing how we can grasp, you know, what the Word of God is saying because we have understanding. We need to look into it. There's so much to look into it. You know, all these 66 books in the Bible is for us to learn. It's more than a lifetime of learning. More. So that's why God in His mercy nowadays gave us at least three score and ten in order to do what? To live our lives as we please? No, to learn the Word of God and to know who the God of the Word is. That's important. Whatever you see out there is going to, you know, go away one day. It doesn't last forever. Whatever you try to accumulate here on earth is for somebody else because you can't take it with you either. When you die, you go out on your own. When you came in, you came in on your own. Nobody came and hold hands with you, for you, you know. So what we need to look at is don't look at temporary things. Temporary things will not last forever. Whatever we have on this earth is for us to utilize, but don't be obsessed with it. Because everything that we have today is the blessing of God. We have a how home. We have a, a something to go about. We have food in the fridge. We have a family that God has given to us. Because, you know, this is, these are all blessings and we need to count them as blessings. We shouldn't take things for granted. So never dwell on the temporary things. Because we never, nobody's going to last forever here on earth. But we are going out of this earth to a city that God has built. We are all citizens of heaven if you believe in Christ Jesus. Because our citizenship is not here. We're just pilgrims passing through. Passing through. And while we're passing through, we must make the right choices. That's important. And here Hebrew is telling us, who is better than Jesus? Who is more perfect? than Jesus? Who is more eternal than Jesus? This is what he's saying. All the other gods died. They died. They never woke up. And they're all in hell because they didn't believe in the son Jesus. It's a sad thing to say, but it's true. 
You know, all these Buddhism, they're practicing so hard to get to Nirvana. They had to do so many stages. And then, you know, what, for what? Look at the Lamas and the Himalayas. They, you, you know, you, they, they try and practice, they, they, they meditate for so long that their hands become dry. And the body is still living, but the hands are dried up. But for what? For what? To go to hell? You know, th this is what the Bible is talking about. Don't waste your time here on earth following that, following this, and listening to that, and listening to this, hearing that, hearing this. Look into the word of God where true eternity is. You know, there are a lot of skeptics out there. A lot of people who think and logically reasoning all the time, and they think there's no God. And they come up with the Big Bang Theory even. Two things came and blow up together, and here we are. And some people say, we come from monkeys. If we are coming from monkeys progressively, what are the monkeys doing today? Why are they not becoming human beings? You know, these are the little things that we need to question, but people don't. They are so conditioned in such a way that they believe everything that the media talks about. A professor can talk about certain things and they believe in it. But the professor could be way out of line. You know, there's so many, so many things out there that we need to test and listen carefully. That we don't follow the wrong thing. But today, Hebrews writer is saying, anyone listening out there, God did speak in the past and is still speaking today through his son Jesus. He is trying to shake the whole system of the world today. And people don't know that. God is shaking. Unless these nations turn to God, they won't survive. Unless people won't turn to God, they're not going to survive either. Because the days ahead are not going to be pretty. According to Revelation, according to the prophetic book, the days ahead are not going to be pretty. But we got to prepare ourselves from now. If we really want to enter eternity where Jesus is. Because when we die, our spirits are going to go out of this body. And that is the important part. Where are you going to dwell? In eternity in heaven or eternity in hell? The religious system under the Mosaic law, any other religious systems were imperfect. Because it could never accomplish a once for all Redemption that was eternal. Like I said, nobody died for anybody. All of them just said, do this, do that, and follow this, follow that. That's all they could say. But you know something? When the Bible talks about without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. That's what the Bible talks about. And you know, all the religions understand that. Funny, but it's true. When you look at Hinduism, once a year, if you look at the tabernacle once a year, the high priest has to go into the Holy of Holies to offer a blood sacrifice for the sins of the nation of Israel. And when he's not right, he drops dead there and then. But if he's right, he makes atonement for the nation and God forgives the nation every year. So in Hinduism, every year, they got to poke themselves, the blood gush out of their bodies. They step on fire, hot fire, flame fire, in order to suffer, in order for them, God, to, to forgive them. That's what they do. They have a glimpse of what shedding of blood and no remission of sin means. They do that. And other religions do that too. Every year, the Buddhists, they cleanse themselves every year by throwing water for four days. Every year in April, they throw water. The whole nation throws water at each other to cleanse themselves. And that's what they do. Every year they believe that all the tr throughout the year, whatever they've done is washed at the end of the year. They're cleansed. You see, belief can be so funny at times. But they believe that. So it's, all the religions has a glimpse of what shedding of blood and remission of sin means. Every religion talks about cleansing. 
at some point. So why not base your belief in the scripture where the origin comes from? But no, Satan has kept all these, the devil has kept all these religion under his little thumb not to come back to the basic which the Bible talks about. So we are scattered. Religiosity is scattered all over the world with so much of different religion. Somebody can just start one religion and many will follow. Another person can start another religion next, next year and somebody will follow. That's what it is. People like to follow. Somebody said on the internet, join me, and he got 5,000 the next week. And they don't even know what they're joining for. This is how gullible people are out there. And the devil likes to keep them there. But if you come into the church life, if you read the scriptures, these are the origin of what God has established. God wants everyone to come back into his abode where he is, to live with him forever in eternity. With all the blessings, the inheritance that he's giving to us. That's his love. That's his love. And if we don't accept that love, well, we have to pay for the consequences of not accepting it. God doesn't do anything to you, but you do it yourself. So the Hebrew writer is warning again all these Hebrews that have been scattered because of persecution. When everything was been shaken, they were scattered. Why did the writer ask his readers to evaluate their faith and what Jesus had to offer them? Because they were going through difficult times and were being tempted to go back to the Jewish religion. That's why the writer is emphasizing. Why do you want to go back to where you came from? These are religious rituals. They're not eternal, they're temporary. But here I'm offering you, I'm telling you something better, something perfect, something eternal. And that's Jesus Christ. So, the, so the, you know, the, the, they were, the, the people were really persecuted and they were scattering and, and scattered and they, they wanted to go back to Ju Judaism, which is much easier. No persecution. Today, Christians are being persecuted, but it's just the surface, on the surface. They, they have not persecuted Christians to the way they're going to persecute them in the future. Because in the future... If you say you're a Christian, and if you want to apply for a job, if you, if you sat with an unbeliever and a believer, they will take the unbeliever, believe me. Believe me. How Many years ago, there was a girl from BA that got sacked because she wore a cross on her neck. See, little by little, the devil is trying to Bring in, in, infiltrating with all these nonsense that the people of the world and people in position will persecute Christians. And if you are suffering for the name of Jesus, God will look after you. That's for sure. You know something? It's funny. You know, people try to persecute Christians. People try to deny God. But you know, and they don't, they don't believe in the Bible. They're such, such hypocrites, critics, you know. And now on the plains... Because the Bible talks about the rapture. You know, one day Jesus is coming back and everybody's meeting him in the air. It's called the rapture. Now, every airline places a non-Christian pilot together on a flight. Just in case the Christian pilot raptures. So the plane will dive down and, and, you know, people will be killed. They don't believe in all of this, but yet to make sure they put an unbeliever in the cockpit. How bizarre is that? Church, one day everyone will be surprised when millions of Christians disappear on earth. And you know, news will flash. And you know what they say? They've not been raptured and meeting God. They say the aliens have abducted them. That's what they say. Easy, isn't it? Easy to say on the news for people to believe. Yes, aliens, the ships, so many ships came to take millions of people from earth. That's how the movies have been Shown, isn't it? Sci-fi movies and all of that. But yet the rapture is going to take place. Amen. And they'll still be surprised. But they will deny it. They will still deny it. That's how skepticism they are. That's how critical they are. But yet, never mind. Whatever is said, whether they believe it or not, it's going to happen. 
because the Bible says so. So they were going through difficult times and were being tempted to go back to the Jewish religion. You know, the temple was still standing when Hebrew was written. It was easier for them to slide right back in. How easy it would be for those Jewish believers to escape persecution by going back into the old Mosaic system, which they had known before. You know, when Toronto rocked the world in the 80s, people were so sucked into it, and people that didn't like it went to the other extreme. And you know what? They don't believe the Spirit of God anymore. They don't believe the churches anymore. They don't trust the churches. There was a time of isolation for so many years. And you know, they go back into the traditionalism realm of church life where they are safe and comfortable. That's what happens. Going back. They're not continuing their walk with the Spirit, leading, finding a true church of Jesus Christ and carrying on with the with their worship and praise, no, they settle back into religiosity and go and sit where there's comfort and safety. Same thing. You know, when persecution hits, when challenges hits Christianity, when confusion hits Christianity, they want to go back. It's easier to slide back and go and sit and do nothing. Thousands of people are that way inclined. And I've known some people that have isolated themselves and don't go back to church at all. But Hebrew writers say, you don't need to go back. As the one who is better than everything, who is Jesus, he will continue to help you, bless you, keep you, restore you, and lead you. And that's what Jesus does. Yes, the world was rocked with confusion. The religious Christianity was rocked in confusion. But yet, God always looked after his people. He looked after his people. Church, it is so easy to go back to your old ways and escape the requirement of being a Christian from the word of God. Oh, this is too hard. Too many rules and regulations. Too many don'ts. Don't do this. Don't do that. But yet, you know what? When God gives you the Spirit of God within you, it helps you to make it easier. There's a war going on within us. The carnality and the spirituality. The old man and the new man. When you come to Jesus, you become a new man. You change. But the old man that you're born with is still there. That's why you need to be reborn. Born again means reborn. You were born in water, which is through your mother's womb. But that is not enough, God says, because if you're born with water only, you will follow anything. The choices you make will be wrong. But if you're born of the Spirit, you will always think about heavenly things, eternal things. That's where we have to be. Born of the Spirit, not only born of water. So it's got to be born twice. If you are born once, you die twice. I used to say that. How do you die twice? If you are born once and not know Jesus, you die a physical death and you die a spiritual death in eternity in hell. That's born, die twice. If you are born twice, you die once, a physical death. And the rest of you will live in eternity forever with Jesus. So easy to go back. Your old ways. You know, so when, you, when people look at Scripture and they say, oh, it's so hard, it's so difficult, it's like being tortured and really... Give up your fleshly desires. It is such pain to give up our old habits and to conform to the Word of God. But yet, God requires that. When we come into the, the kingdom, we've got to be cleansed. We've got to be sanctified. We've got to be washed by the blood of Christ and washed by the washing of the word of, water of the Word so that we are cleansed. And this is what Jesus does through His Spirit. And, you know, it's so much to understand at one go, but yet if you read scriptures all the time, it will reveal to you the things that God requires of you. It's an age, a long process. You know, it's a journey. It's a whole life of studying the scriptures. So, you know, don't say you know the scriptures because you don't. I don't. we still got to continue and study to know more 
and more. There's more every day. There's more every year. And even before you die on a dead bed, there's still more to learn. And you will know that when you see Jesus face to face. Church, Christianity, may be a hard journey, a hard road, but it's so rewarding that you can't but yet walk on this hard road. So rewarding. Other religions will not tell you the future. It's only Jesus and the Word of God and the Kingdom of God will tell you what's going to happen to you in the future, if you believe. These people were persecuted because of the faith. They were true believers and not mere professors. Today, there are a lot of mere professors. That's something that we need to look at. You just can't say, Jesus, I believe in you. You've got to walk it. When you walk it, you listen to what he says. That's what it is. And you hear what he's saying and obey. Just can't be just professors. There are many professors. You know what these professors become? They become easy targets and easy praise. There's a lot of... And the devil is so cunning and so sly and so crafty. He's got all the other religions trying to tempt you. He's got all the false doctrines from Scripture trying to tempt you. And you think, wow, Christianity is so difficult, so complicated. It's not. It's man that has made it complicated. Just believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus, walk with Jesus, read your Scripture, praise Him, come to church, learn more. That's a simple life. That's a simple life. Because everything the Scripture teaches is reality. It's practical in, for your life right now and for the future. So there's so much benefit of being a Christian. I can vouch for that. I, I've been in the ministry for so long. I've been saved for so long. I know the benefits of what I believe in. So I can tell you. So you won't regret it. I tell you one thing, you won't regret it if you continue in Jesus. That's all I can say. So not near professors, but they are true believers. But they were being seduced by teachers of false doctrine. All of it is in Hebrews. Whatever I said this morning, read, go back home and read, and it, it will dawn on your mind, wow, this is the point, this is the point, here's the point. You will get to know it. They were seduced by teachers of false doctrine, and they were in danger of forgetting the true word that their first leaders were dead, had taught them. The leaders have gone and passed. But they still taught the word of God and people carry on and still teach the same way. So the tragic thing about these believers is that they were at a standstill spiritually and in danger of going backward. That's where they were. So some of them had even forsaken the regular assembly. That's why in, in Hebrews 10, 25 it says, do not forsake the assembling. Because that's where the strength is. That's where the strength is. Because when we come together with our problems, with our situation, whatever we're facing, here's a place, here's a point where we can pray for each other, where we can support each other, we can comfort each other, we can read the word together and be encouraged by it. That's why Scripture, Hebrew saying, do not forsake the assembling, because it will just take you further and further and further and further away from the true word of God. Because the devil is looking at all these easy targets and easy praise where he can snatch you away and so that make you believe a lie. That's what he does. And he's good at it. Don't give him any leeway in your life to distract you. So, some of them had even forsaken the regular assembly, which we shouldn't, and were not making spiritual progress. Because that's what happens. You know, you get thirsty. There's no water to drink. That's how it feels. You get dried up. There's no spiritual progress in their lives. In the Christian life, if you do not go forward, you go backwards. There's no standstill. There's no standstill. If you're going forward, praise the Lord, that's fine. But if you don't, you go backwards. That means you go away further and further away from the church. There is no permanent standing still at all. How can go back to your former religion? This is the question that the Hebrew writers are asking. How can you go back after all you've tasted the goodness of Jesus? How can you go back? How can you go back to your fleshly desires after you've been born again and live for Jesus? 
How can you exchange that? Just take time to evaluate what you have in Jesus Christ from time to time. And this is what Hebrew writers are encouraging us. We need to take, take a breather and evaluate our lives where we're at. Constantly. Constantly so that we don't be, get distracted. We can be. Church, he is better than anything you ever had under the law. And this is what Hebrew writers say. He is everything better than ever under the law. This book exalts the person of Jesus Christ and the Son of God. So when you realize all that you have in him and through him, you have no desire for anything else or anyone. That's for sure. And that's where we all should be. That's why we're learning together. That's why we're growing together. We don't need anybody. We only need Jesus. And that's the cry every Christian should make. We don't need anything anymore because he has given us everything. He has given us everything. You know, church, that's how our Christianity should be. Really should be. We've kept on earth for a reason. I'm quite old now. <laughs> but nevertheless, God's still teaching me. God's still showing me. God's still telling me to move forward. And I want to move forward till I'm 90. Still preach the gospel when I'm 90. This is my request to God. To give me all these more years to live and to serve and to preach his word. And that's my request to God. Whether he gives it or not, that's a different story. But yet, he did give somebody in the scriptures. When he asked for 15 years, God gave 15 more years. So if the God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if I'm right with him, well, he might honor my request. So if you, if you want to do more for God, you can request, put in that request too. Not for your own benefit, but for benefit of the kingdom of God. Okay? God always honors the faith of his children. He always does. He is better. He is perfect. He is eternal. So grab him and don't let him go like Jacob. Keep walking with him and look forward to the future where we inherit our inheritance eternally with God. Praising him, thanking him, and just worshipping him. Brilliant. If you, not, if you don't like singing, better start singing because in heaven you'll always be singing. So, so start exercising and practicing from now on. Okay? So Jesus never fails. And he loves you. All of you. With faults and all. With faults and all. I repeat that. He loves you just the same. And he wants to help you. To further your life to be better in Christ. Let's pray.